All right. If we are honest, culture promotes um, sexual promiscuity. Movies, TV shows, books, music, friends, and even sometimes family have this notion that casual sex is no big deal. Some even encourage it as a rite of passage. Nowadays, it is commonly referred to be tactful, uninhibited phase. And if you know, you know. If you don't know, keep listening. You understand soon. So we all. So let's talk about it. Welcome to another episode of This Ain't Sunday Morning, where we talk about life after. The benediction. My name is Courtney. I'm Tanisha. I'm Paige. I'm Antoine. We are the Young Adult Leadership Team of Westside NBC in St. Louis, Missouri, where our aim is to reach the city for God. Shout out to our senior pastor, Charles H. N. Bobo Sr. We affectionately call him PC. Check our show notes for service times. This ain't Sunday morning. What? Okay, we're going to kick off today's episode with our segment called Church Gone Viral, where we talk about just viral church-related content. Now, what we're going to talk about today is not really church-related per se, but we think it impacts people in the church, unfortunately. So there is a podcast called Good Moms, Bad Choices, and they had a discussion about how women... They're in this particular discussion, but I think it applies to women and men, mm-hmm. but how people will have a promiscuous phase. Now, they didn't call it that, but because, you know, we sh- <laughs> we're trying to be good, we can't repeat what they actually called it, um, but they called it um, something similar to a promiscuous phase, a phase where people will sleep around um, and just kind of let loose for a time before they actually settle down. And so in the clip, they were talking about like 99% of people need to do this, and one lady was talking about her how her aunt gave her permission to do it. Uh, one lady was talking about how she got married at a young age, but she still did it <laughs> like during college time. And it was just kind of wild that you just had these, you know, these beautiful women just talking about something that just it sounds so crazy. But it sounds crazy. But I wonder, like, how many people are actually buying into that? What do y'all think? <laughs> Yeah, um, I think it was, um, when I saw the video, I was like, I was kind of shocked that they would come out with this, something like this, mm-hmm. and they s- seemed to be um, around our age, because um, I, I knew some people who were doing that, but when I heard that her aunt gave her permission, that kind of put me, that, that kind of shocked me, to be honest, because I was like, nobody gave me permission, I was just doing what I wanted to do, <laughs> so I mean, I had my own phase, but nobody actually gave me permission, when she said uh, her actual auntie gave her permission that kind of tell me where her auntie was at her auntie was a cougar around that time (laughs) you know what i'm saying so it's like why would you get your child at the time this permission to do this yeah and i i think it's so crazy um but it's so sad that it's a lot of people who have that mentality and think that it is okay to do and like courtney said um I can speak for myself and say that I had a phase, thank God for growth, but the the idea of people like thinking that that is okay and like y'all auntie gave you permission to to do that and you went and did it, please, like, oh my gosh, that's that's crazy to me. I mean, usually for for guys, we are kind of urged to sow our royal, royal oats, if you would, so... I had, ironically, I had both. So I had one, on one hand, somebody like, no, man, you should wait. But it wasn't, the person telling me this didn't wait. So it was like, how you going to tell me? I don't don't understand this message you give me. (laughs) And then uh, I remember one time, like, early on, God had revealed to me. He was like, I want you, like, to learn how to, like, I guess, uh, curate money, meaning, like, create revenue. And I had asked somebody, I was like, so am I supposed to keep my receipts? And he was like, no, nah, man, you need to keep condoms in your wallet. And I'm like, what? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'm like, I was like, oh, okay. I was not going to ask you this question again. Right, right. But it was, it's most definitely from an early age, not, uh, uh, basically, I, I remember it more so when purity culture came along, nobody ever approached a lot of the boys and was like, no, nah, man, you could, you could wait too. 
and it was always for the, uh, the the ladies the young girls at the time and I just thought that was weird cause we, early on we get taught that sex is our identity mm. and when you when I get, when you start looking for a wife it's like bro you can't approach her like we gonna do it right now like you know what I'm saying cause that's still a person right it's like you still have to uh, have self control in that sense mm. right yeah, the biggest thing that stood out for me in that clip was like they were talking about do it then heal so it was like they doing it with the mindset knowing that this is potentially harmful and mm-hmm. you're going to have to get some healing out of this and so like why are we encouraging people to do something that we know is going mm-hmm. to be harmful to them it might be fun in the moment but sometimes like I don't even think people think it's fun like well, right, in the right, moment, in right. that moment, it might be fun. But, like, immediately after, like, I feel like people have regret, you know, mm-hmm. resentment, like, mm-hmm. all kind of stuff. Somebody might catch some feelings, you know. And so knowing that healing has to take place after, it's like, would you, like, drive your car into a wall on purpose, be, like, drive it into a wall, then heal? No. Like, it just <laughs> don't make sense to me. Like, and it makes zero sense. If we being honest, STDs is real, too. Too real. Like, come on now. Some of these STDs you can't get rid of. Um, we good on that. Okay, so as we start our discussion, let's just lay out some groundwork. As believers, we do believe that sex is for marriage, right? However, if we're being honest, that is not everyone's story. Um, So we think that this conversation is very important because it's not just for young adults. It can be for for anyone. It does not matter the age, right? Mm -hmm. So this consists of a time period. Oftentimes when someone is young um, and daring, but not, it's not exclusive to young people, like I said. Um, So during this time, you jump from bed to bed with people, right? And you're not caring about the emotions, relationships, um, people's hearts, and the consequences that may come along with that. Um, You are looking to indulge into these um, quote unquote relationships Um, for the sake of pleasure. A lot of times this can happen during high school, college, or well into your adulthood. So the first question at hand, guys, is why do people have this promiscuous phase and what are some of the reasons why they have this phase? Dun, 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 dun. (laughs) I think it could be a lot of reasons. Like, I mean, number one, some people just may not know anything different. Like, if that's all they've ever seen, like, in the clip, like, how the one lady auntie told her, she had gave her permission to do it. Mm-hmm. And so, like, when you are being influenced in that way, you're thinking, you don't think about the consequences. Right. I think that's what happens. And so, um, you go, you enjoy life for this time period, and you don't think about what is to come, because you don't know about what comes with that. Right. I, right. Think, <clears throat> I think, well, for me, I had a big cousin. Uh, when he used to stay with us when we were younger and um, I used to ask him a lot of advice on how to talk to girls like when I was in high school because and stuff like that my promiscuous phase didn't really kick in for real until like college so everything he <laughs> told me and I saw it was working for me <laughs> I was that was like, it right there that was it right he there he showed them seeds of promiscuity <laughs> man <laughs> like watch this like for real so I was like oh this worked like this and I can manipulate and do stuff like this and still have my girlfriend I was like oh this oh works. Lord. Oh, Lord. So, for me, it was just like, I could do whatever I want because I didn't have a ring on my finger and I was in my early my, my t- early 20s and it was working. I can just find ways to get around, you know, people trying to find out where I was at. You couldn't figure out where I was at because <laughs> I would disappear. Right. So, it was, that for me was like, I peaked game and it was like, follow me or you're going to be behind, you're going to be way behind. Yeah. And I think, <laughs> Courtney, that got me weak because that take me back to my college days, too, because that's when the phase was for me. And I grew up in the church, right? Grew up right here in Westside, and I knew that what I was doing was absolutely wrong. And I pray that if my grandma is watching this, she ain't upset with me because <laughs> she the one that brought me to the church, right? But when I went off to college... I saw all the eye candy, and I was like, (laughs) okay, like, we outside, and all it took was a hey, big head text. Oh, outside. But 
that that caused such a strain on my relationship with God because I knew right from wrong and I still was being very re- rebellious and still did what I wanted to do and at the end it caused me to be hurt right it caused me to have low self-esteem and not know my worth at that time right and if I can go back in time I would not have gone through that phase because it, it pushed me further back from what I was it pushed me it just pushed me further back from my relationship with God and I just wish that I did not do that and also waited for marriage like because that's what I was taught but you know I was trying to be outside that's what happens when you go to an HBCU I heard yep <laughs> not you heard <laughs> <laughs> I think um, other reasons too could be ones that lie a little deeper than the sur- thir- than the surface. Um, sometimes it can be related to trauma. You know, yeah. if somebody yeah. has experienced molestation and like you're introduced to sex in an unhealthy way, and that is your outlet, and so that is now how you um, just kind of deal with that. And I think Reverend Dawn talked about that a little bit in our episode last season when we talked about sex and pornography I think she touched on that a little bit how it can be um like a trauma response I think um it can be a response to like to hurt like if you got cheated on or something like that (laughs) it could be a response to that but I like for me personally I wouldn't say that I had that particular phase because I was never one to just go from bed to bed. You know, Mm -hmm. I always try to make sure I had a relationship with the person. Mm -hmm. But I will say I can relate to where validation would come into place because I allow myself to go into certain sexual situations seeking validation from the person. And so, like, I wasn't necessarily in a committed relationship, but it was just like having that type of attachment to that person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um it was not even real validation like when you know when I think about it because they didn't want to commit to me you know but I still allow that to happen and I think sometimes people will have that phase as a way to take control Mm -hmm. to you know kind of get over the fact that well this person didn't want me but you know all these other people do Mm -hmm. and so now I feel validated right right I mean and then sometimes if I'm honest sometimes it was just for sport just yeah. to see if I could do it. Oh. And, um, mm. yeah. See if you still had it going on. Yeah, and it's, yeah. uh, it's an ego trip. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. If, even if you can, like, you're supposed to be practicing self-control. Right. Yep. Yep. It's Absolutely. your accessibility yeah. is which, in, in which you have to take that as a badge of honor because, like, you wouldn't want a car with a hundred thousand miles on it, and they talking about it's a brand new car. Hmm. Ain't no brand new car, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah. We a hundred thousand. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. That's a man. That's a good point. Like to that point exactly is uh honestly is a real reason why I didn't get in the fraternity. Cause I had somebody. <laughs> that's the real reason. <laughs> Woo. I had like. So I had this girl. I even told my wife about this. I had this girl. Oh, oh Lord. Lord. <laughs> you told your wife? Yeah. 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 So, but well, we good. We ain't going to never go back to Jack State. I, I already mean, told her that. He didn't tell me way more than I have ever wanted <laughs> to know, but I, I am so to. thankful for the transparency. Look, y'all. I'm glad that's that how I got an open marriage like yeah. that, that you can be transparent. I had to talk to her. God told me to tell her everything. So Courtney my was outside. That's how I know Jesus is real. Okay. Like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Courtney Telling. was outside. So I had that happen. This girl <laughs> played me at first, Ooh. and I found out later her her boyfriend was the president of um, a fraternity. The fr- a fraternity. Yeah. And then later she came right back. I was like, okay, so now you want to talk to me, and that was my first introduction to basically you know her playing me. Mm-hmm. And then she taught me something. I was like, if you gonna come back, if I can bag you like this, then I had him coming after me. So I was like. She took me to Memphis one time. We went on a road trip. <laughs> I met her mother. I didn't want to meet her mother. So Ooh, not the parent. <laughs> I met, met her mother out of nowhere. She took me on a road trip. <laughs> when we came back. Her boyfriend was looking for me because I was trying to get in the fraternity. And after that, it was like a no-go. Yeah. I was like, all right, bro, because, like, well, I bagged it anyways. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> but God, where Woo! he has brought you from. Oh my God! I'm Jesus. so glad you married Courtney. Me I'm too. So glad you are married, sir. Oh, yep. 
Lord. Yeah, that, that was all ego. It, it was. <laughs> all yes. ego. Yep, to your point. Yep. But sometimes, like, when I was at college, I had to make sure that I still had it going on. You know what I'm saying? So I would, you know, do things that I ain't had no business doing. But like you said, like, um, Tanisha, that, that validation piece kind of not moved me to do those things. But sometimes I was seeking validation in wrong places. Yeah. That's and it. that's exactly what it was. And those were the places that I should not have been in all of that. So thank God for growth. Um, <laughs> because, yeah, wild times. <laughs> Literally. Wild times. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the part the culture never really discusses. You know, they be leaving out they the, 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 the uh-huh. big parts. Yeah. The consequences. Oh, Lord. What are some of the consequences of your uninhibited phase? Or, or or the uh, of the uninhibited phase period. I mean, we could point out the obvious ones like um, STDs, of course. Yeah. We could talk about unwanted pregnancies and, and things like that. Which I think is funny too. Not funny, but I would remember I saw a post or something talking about Brandy, the singer Brandy, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and about how when she got pregnant, she was just out there living her life, and. Um, what happened was because of the reputation that she had to the world that she was like this good girl girl next door um her mom was not having this Mm -hmm. she about to have a baby out of wedlock so her basically her mom kind of produced a whole show around her being in love with the man that she got pregnant by and that they were gonna get married or that they were married come to find out they weren't married at all it was just kind of a fling you know and so it makes me think about how (laughs) it's like one thing it just leads to more lies and leads to more it just leads sin leads to more sin leads to more sin and we almost dig ourselves into a hole where the only person that could get us out is jesus Mm -hmm. that's right Mm -hmm. absolutely oh and and those good old soul ties yeah those things are so real um i uh before me and before i like pursued my way for marriage a uh, guy was like, "No, nah, don't, don't, don't get in no serious relationships for a year." And I had met my wife a year prior to that, and was looking at her like, "Man, could we be married?" And then God just started throwing all these names in my head, and I was like, "Now she gonna look at me crazy if I call her one of these names." And then I'm be like, "So who is that?" And I'm gonna be like, <laughs> "Uh." Can you even explain what a soul tie is for S- people who may not even know? So, for how I understood it, is it somebody you get, like, an emotional connection to because y'all have crossed mm-hmm. the the line of having intercourse? And then, even after you have separated from this person, it's still s- something about their mm-hmm. essence still stuck on you. Mm-hmm. Good, bad, and, like, because some, the one in particular that uh guy was working, well, m- ministering me through, uh, she just had a negative spirit mm. and it was like I, I felt unpleasant to myself yeah. and I wasn't even with this person and I'm like bro like I'm usually happy go lucky like people always like why are you always smiling I'm like what well, I'm frowning for and I, I found myself frowning a lot more and God was like see I told you don't mess with it and look right. at you you up here mad for no reason yeah yeah, yeah. so I mean, that's really <clears throat> bro that's really good you hit you hit the you hit it on that one because I was like from my experience like we were already married, mm-hmm. and it was like, man, it was the most terrifying experience of my life because God was like, uh, the same time he was like, I used to have like these nightmares because like I had to tell Tanisha about it because I like I felt like the devil, the devil was pulling on me one way, and God was pulling me on another way mm-hmm. to clean out my closet. It just felt like once we got married, and God was like, He already had told me, I'm gonna clean your closet out. I felt like all these like evil like spirits was flying out. Sheesh. In the midst of the house, yeah. so I had to fully get immersed in the word. And when I did that, he pulled the devil out of me, and that was like the most um, scariest thing to do because I had to, I had a lot of soul ties. Yeah, it wasn't it had nothing to do with Tanisha. I had told her everything, and then we had to experience. I had to experience that, so I I, I can be who God has called me to be for her be, way before we had kids. Right. So I can't be out here, you know, still doing like looking at women a certain way right. and trying to persuade them to come talk right. to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I had to get rid of that mindset. 
and I have to, that's why when we first got married, God told me completely, if somebody approaches me, tell your wife. It keeps it honesty, and mm-hmm. it keeps you um, honest with her, and it, it builds the rapport and the relationship, cause, and it builds the communication yeah. mm-hmm. uh, so that you don't have a manipulated mindset of trying to talk to somebody when you know they're going to try to yep. run up on you outside. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you can't, that's how you keep people out of your marriage. Mm-hmm. Don't open those doors. Big facts. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And so, Courtney, I hope you don't mind me sharing, but I do want to get a little more transparent, too, in how your past impacted our marriage as well. So, thankfully, I mean, by the time we met, I didn't know that Courtney, you know, the one that yeah. was Jackson State Courtney. The Jackson, Jackson State, Courtney. State Courtney. I mean, he was a little St. Louis Courtney, too, <laughs> if you want to be honest. <laughs> but thankfully, I did not know that Courtney. <laughs> um, so, he, you know, by the time I came around, I, like, God had already gotten a hold of his heart, and he was ready to be on a new path. However, some of that from that phase still found its way manifesting in our marriage. So even though he was dealing with stuff personally, I think he projected some things because he knew how he used to be. And I think it would cause him to question, like, do I trust him? And so, of course, I trust you. I don't know that other person. Who you are today is the only Courtney that I've ever known. Mm -hmm. But I think he had a big struggle with that at the beginning of our marriage. And so that caused a lot of issues because he didn't he didn't trust that I trusted him. Mm -hmm. And so that whole dynamic. Yeah, yeah, it it caused a lot of issues. And so that's that part like in the clip when they were talking about yeah do it and then heal y'all that healing process was hard yeah, yeah. I mean yeah. we barely made it out of our first year because yeah. of the things that happened before out, we got yeah. married yeah. and yeah. I think people just don't understand yeah healing is possible but why you don't know the depths of what needs to be dealt with yeah. Yeah. and the deeper you go oh the harder it is to get out of it and I thank God that he gave us the grace and the strength to work through it I praise him for that yeah. but it was hard yeah I'm curious, did it make you not trust your wife at some point? Well, <clears throat> because you saw how easy it was for you to manipulate other women, did it make you think, oh, this dude talking to her. Yeah, I got to go press him. Yep. It, that, <laughs> yes. Yeah. That, and I was like, it would force me to be like, just be around. And then God had to show me, it was like, it's not her, it's you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. you the yeah. one with the trust issue yeah. because of what you used yep. to do. Yeah. Right. So right. he kept showing me these visions. So I had to learn. I had to basically relearn how to trust myself, my wife, yeah. and other people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was the weirdest thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it put a lot of undue stress on me because of course. I felt like, like <laughs> I was walking around on eggshells. Right. 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 You know, right. and so, yeah, you go through this phase and you do that and you heal, but you haven't thought about it the other person your forever person yeah. what is that going to do to them yeah. mm-hmm. yep. and Paige you brought it up earlier too like the biggest thing is how it hinders your relationship with God yes yes and I, I think that um, just speaking from experience like I said I was in a, a rebellion stage like I'm going to just do it and me and God we're going to have to duke it out later like we'll talk <laughs> about it later I'm going. He said, hey, big head, that was my thing, you know, and it is what it is. But I hate that I went through that because it's like I I knew right from wrong, right? Raising the church, like I said, or whatever the case might be. But it pushed me so far back with God. And God, I know for a fact, was so upset with me and crying out like, daughter, you don't have to do that. You don't have to go to bed with these men to seek validation or to try to seek your worth or whatever the case might be because you got trauma and all this other type of stuff you don't have to do that and I just hate that I push myself so further back but I praise God to where I am at today because I do have that self-control and growth because a guy can't say hey big head to me no more you got to come better than that <laughs> That's right. yes That's right. so you know I, I thank God for for where I am at today that I don't have that phase anymore but it does push you back further away from God mm-hmm. That's really good. Yeah. and so we can't talk about the consequences and the sin but without talking about encouragement though right yes and yes. so there is always the light at the end of the tunnel so maybe that was your experience maybe it is your experience today but you're you feel convicted mm-hmm. so what we want you to know is that this is not the end of your story yes. it is not your identity 
your body count does not determine your validation yes. so when jesus died he died for our sins and he took them to the cross and he left them there mm -hmm. and so we praise him for that and so we got a clean slate so with that being said though we don't want to you know ignore maybe you might need some therapy though mm -hmm. to unpack mm -hmm. why you went through that phase what was the reason was it a trauma response or are you seeking validation yeah. or do you just need some spiritual counseling because you know sin is sin we're all going to be tempted mm -hmm. so maybe you just need some guidance from a godly mentor or something right. like that do you guys have some encouragement that you could give to people that might be dealing with this or have a friend who's dealing with it and they want to know how to talk to them um, God does not hate you, right? That's good. Uh, just because you, you went through that and you did that, God does not love you any less or whatever. He may be upset because the, the word says that, that marriage, um, sex is for, for marriage, right, between man and woman. But um, he don't hate you, right? He know you. He created you. He know you was going to do that. Now turn it around and repent and just don't do it again. <laughs> well, I would say, um, <clears throat> yeah, God forgives you. Um, continue to repent and ask for forgiveness. First, forgive yourself and ask God for forgiveness. Because if you forgive yourself, then it, it'll be easier to let Him into your heart and then into your mind. Um, so that way, you will be more focused on the Word of God and focus on God versus trusting other people. Uh, cause sometimes we get lost in that when we are. Um, when we're, when we're doing stuff with our flesh we, we look at people who judge us versus looking to um, God who continues to love us uh, so don't look at anybody who continues to judge you you can't worry about what people say or what they do worry about the word of Christ yeah that's good only God can judge <laughs> okay and so we just want to say so if you're waffling or just don't know what if you're unsure about should you do this phase we're going to say no it's not worth it no, it's but not. it's just it's easier said than done so i think this is a good point to just pray yeah right so dear heavenly father we do thank you um that you are the god of love that you love us so much and you only want the best for us oh god but you love us so much that you have worked through every detail of our life lord you created sex oh god and we know that you made it for husband and wife to enjoy one another and so lord we just ask that you would pray oh, excuse me we ask that you would help us oh god to honor you with our bodies to honor you with our relationships lord that we will do what is pleasing in your eye but lord we recognize that we have fallen short and so for those who have gone through this phase lord we just ask for healing and rest restoration God we ask that you would just cover their heart for those who are seeking validation we pray that they find their validation in you Lord and we just ask for complete healing and deliverance Lord and salvation in the name of Jesus amen, amen. 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 If you enjoyed this episode and if you would like to help support the podcast, please subscribe and leave a rate and a review. For our YouTube listeners, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. To stay up to date with This Ain't Sunday Morning and to get all the behind the scenes content, you can follow us on Instagram at WS period YAM, on Facebook at Westside Young Adults, and on TikTok at WSYAM.STL. You can also send your thoughts or questions directly to us to our email, youngadults at westsidenbc.org. Also, if you send us a screenshot of your like, subscription, or follow, you will be entered into a raffle to win some This Ain't Sunday Morning merch. Thanks for watching.